Hey guys, and welcome to another short devlog video. I am super excited to finally be able to show you guys what I've been working for the past two weeks or so. Um, since I first revealed the procedural city generator and the procedural park, I've been getting a ton of messages from you guys, um, you know, via um, YouTube, email, and uh, Discord, asking me what the status is, when things are going to get released. And of course, I've been really busy working on ABK, uh, as you all know. But um, after thinking about it a little bit and getting some additional messages from you guys, I've decided to separate the procedural park and make it its own asset. That way I can actually focus on it and, and do the improvements that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, so last week, <clears throat> uh, some of you saw it on Discord. I asked you guys, what would you like to see added to the park? Uh, and I got a bunch of good suggestions. So I, uh, I did some modeling. Uh, as much as I can and this week I've been actually imp implementing everything into Unreal and separating this into its own thing. Uh, this is basically the same thing that happened to the procedural foliage placement tool. Uh, it was going to be something very simple but then I decided to actually make it its own thing and then I was able to make it way better than I originally planned. So this is kind of the same idea. Uh, I have made a lot, a lot of improvements uh you know so if you if you recall what you saw last time if you go back and see the last video for the procedural park uh hopefully you'll be very very pleasantly surprised as to what i have right now uh, so the first thing you'll notice is obviously this is a this is its own project <clears throat> i've actually <clears throat> uh added a um a procedural material if you recall one of the things that the park uh the old park had was a floor uh, and I had to spawn grass as individual instant static meshes on the floor, but it didn't really look as good, right? You, you can't really uh, do it as good as, as having it in the material. So my solution was simple after looking at several different options was to simply include a material that would interact with the park and give you guys the option. So as you can see here, it's a, it's a modified version of the material that you guys have from the Animal Behavior Kit. Uh, with a few additional layers here, you see there's a procedural layer, there's a layer to remove uh, foliage, there's a path, and there's sand. Uh, and you'll see it, and you'll see in a minute why these layers are like that. It's still fairly simple, but if I zoom here, you'll see that all it does is it has uh, the grass. Uh, I, that was one of the goals, was to make it way nicer, and I wanted to, from the beginning, add the ability to support bodies of water. So you can see we have a lake here um, and we have a river. And this is the same river tool that comes with the procedural foliage placement tool. So this is gonna come with this asset as well. So you can make your rivers. And here you see that we have a little walkway. This was a, a very simple blueprint, um, but I decided to add it here. It's like a, like a little pier sort of thing. Um, also, you will have a blueprint to make uh, fences here. So uh, the idea is to give you uh, as many resources as possible to make the park uh, as, as good as possible, right? Um, if you look here under the general settings, I'll give you guys kind of a, a quick overview of what I've done. Um, I've organized everything into separate structs. So you can see here, these are the expandable sections here that you see. It used to be kind of a mess with variables all over the place. Uh, now everything's organized in a more logical way. You see that we still have the option to show the floor, but I'm gonna go through uh, the, the process of generating the park without the floor, which is, in my opinion, the, the better process. Um, <clears throat> I added presets. So there's so many settings here that I decided to add this little section here called presets. So you have the auto parameters like last time, meaning that the parameters for uh, the park will change based on the size of the park. So the bigger the park, it will automatically add more central actors, more entrances, more uh, um, area props, etc. And if you make it really, really small, it'll get to a point where you won't even have uh, central actors, for example. It'll just have a few paths. So in addition to that, I have generic presets for number of entrances, number of central actors, area props, foliage density, and grass and flower density. And if you see here, we go from high, medium to low 
on all of them. So not only do you have the auto parameters, but you can actually adjust really quickly the, the, the scale of all of these different elements by going to the presets here. And now when you go to the presets, all you have to do is, uh, is click on set parameters and it'll automatically reset all of the numbers for the part. Uh, and if you recall, if you go down here, um, automatically based on the on the size of the park, the, the blueprint will decide how many total central actors there will be, how many uh, fixed path actors, for example, how many um, max area prop actors there will be, etc. Um, so that's all being determined. So what is really new? Because uh, I know I'm talking a lot. I, I, I think I probably better show you guys, right? Um, so it's the same process as before. You start uh, right here in this all numbered. You start by spawning central actors here. Uh, and in this case, notice that there's an internal volume here. So this internal volume is used to spawn the central actors. And you can change this volume to be bigger or smaller. That way, the density of the, of the center of the park, where all of the crossroads will be, can be more controlled. So you don't get a random uh, actor that should be in the center, like on a corner here doesn't make sense, right? Usually these things are kind of towards the middle of the of the park. And then the entrances kind of join these things together. Then you can click on create paths. And you can see, I'm gonna zoom up here. You can see automatically that um, it, it chooses, it creates entrances. Uh, it always creates entrances in the corners. Um, and then it creates additional ones and it joins all of the different uh, central actors together. There is an option to remove the corner entrances. So you can always go here into the entrance details and uncheck corner entrances in case you don't want the entrances to be in the corner and they will just generate on the sides without the corners. Then after that, you can click on spawn props. And right here, you'll see if I, if I come here, you'll, you see they're still buggy, by the way. It's not completely done. Uh, you can see that uh, some of the paths are still not uh, flattened into the terrain. But you'll see that the props will automatically have the lamps, which is what I had before. And then we'll have um, something like picnic tables. And then we'll have some additional area props like a bathroom, which I'll show you guys in a second here, nearby the uh, central actor. And you have things like the gazebos, etc. Then, after that, I'm going to go back to the park here. You can go ahead and, and click on spawn grass. And the cool thing is here that if you're showing the floor, when you click on spawn grass, it'll spawn the grass and the flowers. Uh, it has some flower details here. If you, if you see here, we have a grass list and a flowers list. But if you don't have the floor showing, like in this case, it'll only spawn the flowers automatically. So if I press uh, spawn grass, notice that it's adding flowers randomly. And I'm gonna spawn it again so it's really obvious. So you can see now we have the flowers in the park. Then from there, you will spawn the foliage. And notice that uh, by default is a uh, little sparse. If you want to spawn more foliage, you can just press the button again, right? And it'll just keep adding foliage. Obviously, uh, not spawning on any of the um, elements here. And then from there, uh, you can um, convert the, the props into instant static meshes and the foliage into instant static meshes. But there's a few extra things that I wanted to show you guys, which I think are really cool. So if I just start here, I'm just going to make this bigger here. Notice that it looks way nicer as far as uh, the flowers and the and the grass. It looks way more natural. Notice here that um, I've added code specifically to uh, not go down uh, with the water. So it automatically creates bridges on top of water. So that's actually intentional. So if, if the if the um, the path uh, detects water, it'll actually keep the same level. And you'll see in a second why. Then you have um, some animated, I've improved some of the central actors here. So for example, 
Um, this is a fountain and you can see that it has some, some particles here. I've added a bathroom as one of the, the requests. So you can see here uh, some sinks. You can have your own little private bathroom here. And then for uh, females, you see that we have different bathroom stalls here. Now, the next step would be, and this is just using the material, the next step would be actually using the material to make sure that the roads are uh, looking correctly. So notice here that the grass is uh, kind of going around, uh, overlapping the, the, um, the pathway, right? So one thing you can do here is, I've already have it set up here, but you can use any material. You can come here um, and say, I would like to apply the path material. And you go ahead and click here. And notice here that the material around the path changed. And one way that you can do that is, if you open the material instance, you have to make a change and save it to force Unreal to make the, uh, the update to the material. And now, with that small change, notice that now the paths are now um, with a different texture and now no grass is now overlapping the path so it looks way nicer now each path is now uh, completely free there's no foliage as you can see here there's also um, the ability to change meshes so for example let's just take this example here Uh, let's just do it here on this one. So notice that uh, obviously this doesn't look correct. Yeah, you, you should have some kind of uh, bridge, for example, would be ideal on top of the water. And you can actually do that. You can actually add a spline point here. And I'm going to put it like this. And I'm going to add another spline point here. And notice that now we have different sections. So I've added, um, I've added a way to change the mesh. Uh, in between sections. So in this case, um, we're going to section seven, for example, and we come here to section seven and we select this section is over water. And as soon as you do that, it'll automatically change the mesh to a little bridge. And uh, it can go further than that. I can go in and add another uh, spline point here. Oops, one second. And I can put it kind of in the middle. And now I want the section seven and eight to have the water mesh over water. And then what I can do is I can actually make this a little bit higher to make it look like a little bridge. And I can adjust the spline points until I get what I want. And finally, I can actually add supports. And you can see that now has little supports going here in the water. And you can do, by the way, you can add any mesh you want. Uh, this is basically uh, a mix between the modular road tool, not as complicated as the modular road tool, but you can see here that each individual uh, segment is a struct and you can change the mesh uh, and you can change a bunch of things like scale and thickness. So you can, you can make, for example, uh, let's say this section here, section five, you can make section five, um, the, um, the end scale be, let's say, oh, I don't know, 1.5 and notice how this is getting thicker. And then on number six, you can see that the beginning, uh, scale is 1.5 and you can see how it goes from being a little bit skinnier to a little bit thicker to a little bit skinnier so you have a lot more flexibility now as far as how your path will look like every single path uh, segment will have its own mesh 
for the ground and for the water, as well as some um, scaling abilities. And we can do the same thing here. Again, I'm not going to um, spend too much time um, going through this, but, but you, get, you get the idea, right? We can go here and add more spline points and say, okay, well, starting in number three, I want it to be over water. Four over water. And let's say five also over water. And actually, if I wanted to, I could make this kind of curve a little bit here. And then I could say as well, why don't we just go ahead and add support? And it goes from a regular path to a little bridge and to a regular path again. And actually, in this case, I wouldn't want number five to be over water. There you go. So it kind of ends like that. Cool. Um, there's a, a few other things um, that you can do. So, for example, if I come back here to the park, another cool thing I've added was on uh, spawn history. So you have now uh, different ways of kind of going back. You can uh, remove all of the paths automatically. You can remove everything, which was before, or you can remove the selected object. And basically you have a spawn history here. Again, very similar to the uh, procedural foliage tool, where every time you spawn something, it will create a separate entry in this map. And whatever you select here, um, you can go ahead and, and remove. So if you're not happy with uh, a specific um, area, so for example, let's say the last uh, foliage that I spawned right here, I can go ahead and say, remove selected objects. And notice that it removed that object. Say, I want to remove um, area props right here. And I go ahead and I can remove the selected object. And notice that the bathroom here uh, was removed. If you want to start over from scratch, you can go ahead and click on remove everything. And notice that uh, the, the paths here are still there. So if I click undo, what I can do is I can click on clear path material. And then I click on remove everything. And notice that now everything is as it was. Uh, now, you might want to come here and again make the change. And now you see that the, uh, that the park is back to where it was. You can always go back and paint if you if you really want to get rid of all that and that way um, it'll get back to the way it was all right now let me show you another configuration real quick if we go to foliage one of the things i've added for foliage was uh, the ability to have a spawn rate so in this case the percent chance to spawn for this was 100%. So I'm going to make this zero. And now uh, for this uh, tree, I'm going to make this 20% chance for the Scott Spine. This is coming from the uh, kite demo. And for the hill tree, I'm going to make it 100%. So now the trees, the foliage that I'm going to spawn is going to be between these two trees. And in this case, I will decide, let's see here. If I go back to the spawns, I'm going to go back to the random area props. There are options here to have certain area props always spawn, which is something really cool. Or you can have a percent chance to spawn here. So you could have it at 20%, it's just the, the standard. And if you want something to always spawn, then you can click on always spawn. So that guarantees basically that, that if you want something like the bathroom, for example, to always be there, it will always be there, right? So let's make this 100%. Uh, and notice that the spawn method is random location inside of park. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to nearby a random path. So now the area props, instead of being just completely random, you can spawn them in a random location inside the park, which is completely random or you want to pick a random path and spawn near a random path or spawn near a random central actor. So in this case, for this um, for this one, it's gonna be a little kiosk here. 
I want it to be near a random path, and I want it to be 100% chance to spawn. Then for this one, again, we're going to make this 100% chance. And I, again, I want it to be nearby a random path. And I'm going to quickly do this again. And then number four, which is the bathroom, I want it to be near nearby random central actor. So it's always going to be near a central actor and always spawn. So there is a guarantee that it will always spawn. The other ones may, may uh, will spawn. Oops, percent chance to spawn 100 here. I'm going to click on save. And now I will go ahead and spawn the central actors. By the way, you can move these guys around. I'm just going to let it be create the different paths. If you're not happy with the paths, you can go ahead and remove the paths and go again. Then I want to spawn props. Notice that we have a lot more props now. And props like the swings are going to be near a path. These are going to be near paths. And the bathroom, as we select, is going to be near a central actor, which makes sense, right? When you're in this area, you want a little bathroom here. And you have this little swing area here. What you can do, of course, is always move them around. So say you want to create a little area here near this uh, water fountain. You can do it like this. And then you can go ahead and clone this guy and make like a little play area here. And I want this guy here just for variety's sake. Now I'm going to move this guy here and this guy I'll rotate to be closer to here. I'm doing this really quickly just to show you the possibilities, but obviously, uh, you know, when you, when you would be doing your real park, you actually take a lot more time to, to try to get things in the, in the setup that you want, right? You will go ahead and spawn the grass, which in this case are the flowers. You can see here. We'll go ahead and put even more flowers. And now remember that we decided to spawn a different kind of foliage. And I'm going to go ahead and click on spawn foliage. Notice that now we have some of the kite demo trees. But in this case, I want to go back and remove that last foliage. And I want to go... Um, Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and just do it a couple, couple of times. I can just press spawn foliage a few times if I really want it to be dense. So you can see here. And another thing that you may have noticed, I have a wind actor that I can spawn. And it, depending on the material for your trees, some trees may react to wind. In this case, I noticed that the, the kite demo assets reacted to wind. So I can just click on spawn wind actor. And notice how the trees start moving immediately. And then um, I can go ahead and apply path materials. I go here. I save. I take a quick look at my park just to see how everything's looking. You have some swings here. And if you saw the last video, the swings are actually using physics constraints, which is pretty cool. So they're actually interactive. I follow my little path here and notice that uh, in this little area here, we have a nice uh, uh, playground with four, um, I don't know how you call them, um, little areas here. You have the seesaw, which actually all of it um, reacts to physics. You have this guy here, whoops. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> and you have the, uh, the swings here. Same thing, I can go here and you can notice that even though I'm going around the water, this is a bug, I need to fix that. Um, the, um, the paths are not dipping. Right, uh, and you have the bathroom here. So I can always go back and quickly make the change here and say, okay, I want to add a new section here. 
and another section here. And I'll see that is section six and seven. I want to add support. You can see that we have a little bridge here. And I could do the same thing here as well. And add some support. There you go. Yeah. All right. You get the idea. Um, and here, uh, the last thing I'll show you guys is. Uh, how to create a little path. So say that you wanted to create a little path from here all the way to this little area here. So what you can do is you can manually uh, remove the trees or there's a little um, utility that I'll show you in a second that you can use to remove instant static meshes. But in this case, I'll just create the path right here. So you can come here and say, all right, I want to go ahead and use the paint and create a little path. I'm going to make this way smaller. You can see that I have now a little path here. Move this guy here and you can see here that you have now a path that goes around into here if you wanted to remove the flowers for example you would um, you would use this little utility here this is the HISM utility and I'm gonna bring it here to the path and what this does is it allows you to remove instances, add instances, or even change the material. So what you would do is you would select the actor reference. And in this case, I'm gonna to try to select one of these flowers here, or do you see uh, PP grass too? And what I can do is I can just say remove instances and any instances of those flowers will be removed. You can see that some of these flowers are being removed here. Or I can go ahead and say PP grass three and these are the ones that are more prominent. Oops. You can just kind of push it a little bit, remove the instances, and kind of clear your path that way. There you go. And we have a few more flowers here that I would like to remove. So go ahead and remove, and then go back to grass two and remove. And now, if you hit play, you'll see that now we have a nice little path that goes to the lake. And in this case, we have a little walkway that's included. And this is of course a spline. So you can go ahead and turn it around Right. Get longer. Very simple spline, but gives you the ability to have a little pathway to the water. And once you're ready, you can go ahead and come back here and convert all of your props to hierarchical instant static meshes and all of your foliage into hierarchical instant static meshes. 
and you can see here that the performance is pretty good. Need to fix that. This is going to get fixed. Uh, so you can see there's still some things that need to work out, but I wanted to make this video to give you guys an idea of kind of what's going to look like. All right, guys, sorry, uh, kind of rambling a little bit. There's a lot of things that have changed. I have a few additional things that I want to add. Obviously, the bug fixes like the past not being correct um, is obviously on my list. I want to do a batch uh, spawning similar to the procedural um, city generator. Um, because if you make a huge park, it can actually uh, take a little longer to spawn all those instances. Uh, there's a few additional things that I want to make, like improving the spawning algorithms. Uh, but by and large, this is basically what you've seen before, but way improved with uh, you know a nice material that goes with it, improved path generation, uh, support for bodies of water, like you can see here, now you can make a little bridge. Uh, even though in this case it's kind of crooked, I need, need to fix the roll here. Uh, but you have the ability to make uh, bridges, um, you have animated um, central actors like fountains, for example. I'm including additional things like bathrooms and swings. Uh, and I have a few other ideas that I want to add uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but I think this is pretty much, um, you know, almost done. Um, I'm really eager to uh, hear what you guys have to say. Do you like what you're seeing? Do you have any suggestions? Of, uh, any any additional features you'll like to see uh, so yeah let me know what you guys think thank you guys so much and I'll talk to you in the next video